Alaska and the Alaskan bull moose has a special place in the heart of anybody who's done moose hunting. They're the largest moose on the planet. The areas that you hunt are usually along waterways, uh, river systems, and I had found a place to hunt that was known as Jurassic Park for moose. It's where some of the largest bull moose have come from in Alaska. And we could not find a bull moose. I'm talking about eight days of hunting, never seeing a bull moose. We packed up this cat raft, basically just a big pontoon type looking uh, inflatable boat, and we just started down the river with the big oars. And then it started to rain, and we got a day of just nothing but rain. But there was a lot of sign in the area, so we really felt like we were in a promising spot. I'd say a lot of people in Alaska depend on moose for their primary meat they eat for the whole year, you know. So it's not only a sport to the people in Alaska, I mean, it's a way of life. There's some fresh tracks right here. Look like bull tracks coming into this willow thicket. Bed. This is a moose bed right here. And one right over there, too. You can see all these trees that are broke off halfway up like this. This is from where the bulls were in here rutting last year. You can see how tall a bull moose is. They break those off with their antlers. These thickets like this close to the river and in these beaver flowages are where these moose are hanging out. Definitely a couple of beds in here and probably more back deeper into the thicket. I had talked to the guide and the outfitter before I went on the hunt and I said, you know, I haven't had all the best luck with moose. I don't have a hunt booked after this. And so can I stay over, if we do the 10 days and we don't shoot a moose, can I stay over another 10 days if needed to try to get this done? The outfitter, who was the pilot, he basically said, you know what, you know, you can stay for as long as you want. Here's your camp, here's the area, but you're not gonna have a guide. I've got other hunters coming in. I remember standing on that riverbank when my guide flew off with Chad Reel, and I'm alone. Look at these fresh moose tracks, bull tracks, coming right down here along the edge of this river, continuing that way. You can tell they're fresh for two reasons. One, look at how they're padded down in the mud here. Look at the size of that track compared to my bow. And look here, in the water, can see a little bit of like silt and debris where he stirred that water up as he's crossed here. Let's keep working this way. About the time I see the moose, the moose sees me. He's probably 200 yards away. Absolutely no chance for a shot. And he's going to cross the river of which I, without the boat I can't get across. So. I'm like, what am I going to do? Just watch this moose walk away? What I decided to do was to take my bow and use it like his antlers and put it over my head and kind of just grunt and walk slow and deliberate right straight at the moose. And I figured, well, maybe he's in the rut. He, he might think I'm another bull. Uh, let's try it. I've seen Jim Shockey do it many times with a bow door over his head up in the Yukon and, and uh, he's had great success. So let's give it a try and sure enough, 200 yards turns to 150 yards, turns to 100 oh. yards, turns to 75 yards. Pretty oh. soon, I'm walking up on this bull. It's too far.
the morning. I'm having a little bit of bow hunter's remorse from yesterday evening. I couldn't hardly sleep any last night. That big bull out in the river was 75 yards. I had a 60 yard pin on my bow. I was at full draw. I had the pin on him. I knew what I needed to do, but I just thought it was too far and I let down. This morning, it's a little bit foggy, but it's gonna burn off, I think. I'm gonna go down across the river and see if I can pick up his track and uh, try to call and move through the woods. I've only really got a couple more days to hunt. And I get up in the trees and do a little bit of calling and I hear a branch break. And sure enough, there's a little beaver pond back in here along the river and I spot that bull moose. Immediately I go into hunt mode because I'm thinking, you know, it's first thing in the morning. This is my second chance. I've got to make it happen. So I climbed up over a little beaver dam and got down and crawled into position. Alaskan bull moose. That was a nice one, man. I'm not 250 yards off the river. 44 yard shot. Let's give him some time. This is our bull right here. These are his tracks. One of the things you need to do when you're blood trailing is look at those tracks and look at them good. Memorize them because if you lose the blood, you might just have to trail him with the tracks. It's a nice bull. And there he is, in the river. Unbelievable. Look at this waterlogged Alaskan bull moose. Look at that bull. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is incredible. Alaska is the last frontier. It's a bow hunter's paradise. It's an adventure bow hunt. And this is the hunt of a lifetime. And to shoot the bull of a lifetime on the hunt of a lifetime on ESPN, that is what it's all about. Look at this big Alaskan bull moose. <laughs> yeah, I just love bow hunting. <laughs>